Hi everyone, hope you're healthy and safe. Uh, welcome to the Thinking Crypto YouTube channel. We cover the news, facts, and sentiments here. Uh, if you're new, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button. Guys, we've been talking about the digital dollar over the past week or so. We've seen it get introduced into different bills in front of Congress. And you know, there's different talks about uh, moving funds, stimulus funds via a digital dollar to Americans because of the health issue, which can be, uh, you know, it can be transmitted uh, via paper money. So uh, certainly this pandemic is a catalyst that is, you know, really fast tracking the process. I believe these things have been in motion for years because the governments and central banks were worried about the disruption that came from cryptocurrencies, which are here to stay. It's the new asset class. And then when they saw that Facebook was going to create their own uh, respective uh, currency or token, um, they got worried and it they really started fast tracking the process. So here this article the Overton window opens for a digital dollar. So legislation introduced in the U.S. Congress this week signals the Overton window, a metric of what's politically feasible, is opening in favor of national digital currencies. Guys, CBDCs are going to become a thing. The IMF, uh, the World Bank, the Bank of International Settlements, everyone is on board. When the, all these people met at Davos um, at the World Economic Forum, they were talking about it. The World Economic Forum put out guides. I've shown that on this channel before. So CBDCs are coming. The digital dollar is coming. And if you recall, even back in February, we saw that an ex chairman of the CFTC, a government official, right? He's no longer with them, but he was pushing for the digital dollar. He's known as Crypto Dad. Hester Pierce at the SEC is known as Crypto Mom. So we see government officials, the dialogue is taking place. There's people fully buying in and on board, and they are trying to push forward the movement. It's just a matter of time. And I believe the creation of CBDCs will validate the crypto market the crypto asset class and it will bring in new people into the crypto market because it will help people to understand wait a minute money can be in a digital format in a tokenized format you mean like bitcoin like ethereum like xrp right it's and it, if you get them educated about uh having an online wallet and moving money that way right because we saw that the digital dollar will sit in a federal reserve wallet <laughs> digital wallet uh so this this is amazing to see and of course it's going to build more interoperability with cryptocurrencies and uh, i'm certainly excited and one you know crypto that i hold in my portfolio is xrp i'm very bullish on it i hold bitcoin and ethereum and others i diversify to reduce the risk in my portfolio but ripple is doing some major things to build a use case and utility around xrp the big one will be of course the bridge asset between different currencies and cbdc's and so forth right we know about that but there's also a micro payment there's an ecosystem use case where because of its speed and low transaction fees uh, XRP can be leveraged in many ways to monetize content streaming and as well as gaming. Now, Fort taps five new gaming partners as a blockchain by itself isn't enough. So what does that have to do with XRP? Well, if you guys recall, Ripple has set up a $500 million uh, fund called Spring, which invests in different startups and companies to build utility around XRP. So essentially, they'll invest in those companies and get them to leverage XRP within their ecosystem. Part of that was Fort. So uh, notable among these investments was a hundred million dollar fund provided to gaming startup Fort to help it develop games that use XRP. So that's the whole idea is to monetize the game so in-game purchases and so forth can be uh, set up via XRP. And this is you know news that came out since last year, if you guys recall. So by Fort expanding its own partnerships and networks, it increases the utility uh, potential for XRP because they're primarily funded to do that, right guys? Um, the money talks here. So according to a March 24th blog post, Fort's new game developers include United States-based High Red Studios and Enway, Canadian social games provider Magmic, German gaming firm Decca Games, and Netmarble. The newly announced partners follow their previously joined collaborators, including Disrupt Beam, Other Ocean, and Congregate. So 
pretty clear here what's happening, right? They are expanding. The news even mentions here uh, the whole spring funding that took place, obviously, uh, last year. So big things are ahead. And uh, here's what, uh, you know, Josh Williams, Ford's co-founder and CEO, had to say. Together, we'll work towards building a more accurate, uh, open, equitable, and sustainable ecosystem that addresses many of the issues found today in games in the games industry. So, a big part of that is going to be monetization and making sure uh, money and whatever is collected accordingly. A big part of that will be XRP. Now, on the XRP news here, we Swin, which he runs the uh, XRP L Dev company funded by Spring as well. Uh, and the timing of this is very interesting. Uh, he has launched the beta of the Zoom app, which they've created. And this, of course, this app is uh, for iOS and Android, and it allows you to access the XRP ledger. Zoom makes sending, receiving, and interacting with the XRP ledger easy and secure. Obviously, on the XRP ledger, you have XRP. As you can see here on the screenshot, you can buy and sell whatever it may be for USD and interact with different platforms. So the ecosystems, the different uh, use cases and utility is being built here around XRP. That is why it's in my portfolio. And I am not an XRP maximalist. I'm just covering the news of what's being built here. I hold the Bitcoin and other things because sometimes people comment on these videos saying, oh, you're XRP maximalist or something. I'm not. I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist. I'm not an XRP maximalist. I'm a maximalist about making money. And I'm looking at real projects that have real partnerships, real utility, and so forth and uh, are disrupting or solving a real world problem. And that is what I'm looking at and the potential of return on my investment. I think many of you mature investors understand my position. Uh, the people who are maximalist and religious followers may not because they're caught up in their feelings. I don't invest in emotions. I invest in uh, reality and real world use cases and what makes sense logically and from a business standpoint. Now, finally, guys, Russian Prime Minister introduces bill to allow fintech sandboxes, blockchain included. Governments around the globe are opening the doors, guys. They're uh, unbanning, crypto banning, like, like we saw in banking, like we saw in India. Um, South Korea putting out their regulations. We saw in Zimbabwe, they opened up the crypto regulations. So now in Russia, you know, they're going to have these sandboxes for these companies. And, you know, some companies, some countries may be uh, slower than others, but they're all going to follow suit. This is the new asset class, the new disruptive technology. It is how money is going to be set, is how assets are going to be set, tokenization. We are headed to the token economy. Hope you guys uh, see the, the, the vision here. It is pretty much clear what is taking place and don't fall for the smoke and mirrors move that we see sometimes people trashing crypto crypto has been here for a while it's here to stay it will continue to grow and big things are ahead and i think a big validation of that digital dollar along with other cbdc's around the globe guys what do you think about this news leave your thoughts and comments below thumbs up if you like this video please share it if you found it helpful and i will talk to you all later